Well, praise God. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Amen. Amen. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So glad you're here this morning. We're going to talk about Jesus this morning. How about that? Amen. A lot going on out there. And I tell you what, last night the Lord spoke to me and said, we're not going to talk about any of it right now. We're not going to do it this morning. This morning we're going to talk about how good God is. Amen? Amen. And we're going to talk about what Jesus said and those words of comfort from his mouth. So if you are able, please stand. If not, that's okay, but we're going to read God's word. We're going to turn to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And we're going to read beginning at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your most holy and excellent word. And I pray, Lord, today that you would, as we read and hear your word, please teach us by your spirit. Father God, we don't need to hear from Pastor Kimball today. If we leave here having heard from Pastor Kimball we will leave here with nothing. But if we leave here having heard from you by your precious Holy Spirit, we will leave with a life-changing treasure that is my desire this morning, that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Last night we were on the road. We arrived here in uh, KPAC about 5.30, 5.15, 5 5.30 this morning. So in body I am weary, but in spirit I am soaring this morning because of how good God is and how awesome and wonderful and precious is our dear Savior, Jesus Christ. I read this scripture as an opening text because I want us to just remember that Jesus Christ is God. Amen. He is Son of God in that He was God made flesh. But He was, is, and ever shall be God. As the Bible describes him, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, the Mighty God. 
It's describing Jesus. So Jesus Christ is God. I want us to not forget that. Yes, he's our friend, our dearest friend, the friend that sticks closer than a brother, the friend that will never leave us, the friend that will walk beside us, the friend that will carry us when we need to be carried. As that old poem goes, you know, the, the guy had a vision and he saw his life and there was two sets of footprints in the sand and he knew that it was one of them was his and the other was the footprints of our Lord Jesus. And he noticed that in all the hard and rough parts of his life, all those dark and dreadful times that we all have, it's just a part of life. He noticed that there was only one set of footprints at those times. And his mind began to wonder, where was Jesus? And Jesus, in the poem, responds, Oh, it was those times that I carried you. We're in those times today. We need to be reminded of our Lord Jesus Christ and his awesome power. He spoke and the worlds were formed. We just read it. There was nothing made that was not made by the Lord Jesus Christ. He is all-powerful. In fact, in the scriptures, just before he leaves, he says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power, all power is given unto me, he said, in heaven and on earth. There's nothing too difficult for God. Nothing is too difficult for God. If we have faith in that wonderful and awesome, awesome God, we can say to a mountain, be removed and cast out into the sea, and it'll be done. Do you remember Peter, when he got out of the boat and he walked towards Jesus on the raging sea? Remember Jesus was walking on the water and, and, the, and his disciples were in the boat and they saw him and they said, yeah, it's a ghost. They were terrified already and it was very dark. Peter said, if it's really you, Jesus said, don't be afraid, it's me, guys. It's me. That's a paraphrase. It's me. And Peter said, if it's really you, bid me come out on the water with you. And Jesus said, come on. Now I want to tell you, if Jesus tells you to do something, I don't care what it is, you can do it. He essentially told Peter, walk on water. He did it. He got out of the boat and he was walking on the water, that troubled water, to go to Jesus. He has all power. Jesus has all power. He has calmed a raging sea with a word. There can be waves and all kinds of tempests, but when he says, peace, be still, There's peace. Our God is an awesome God. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. He made everything you see. He made the heavens. He made the earth. He made all the creatures. He made, he made the people. Thank you. He made everybody. He made everything. And someday, listen, someday it's all. Everybody and every part of the creation is going to praise him. Amen. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. to the glory of God the Father. He is our God. He is our King. He is our friend. 
He is our protector. We're going to read a few scriptures this morning that highlight those comforting words. We're going to read comforting words of our Lord Jesus. Because I think in this time, in this dark and evil day, we need to be reminded of these things. Now, I don't know how bad it's going to get, but I believe it's going to get worse. It is not a public health issue. We are in, perhaps, the final struggle. I don't know. And I don't want to scare anybody. I'm going to encourage you this morning. He is with us. Amen. However bad it gets, if you're in Christ, you're going to be okay. We were just at the replica of the ark in Kentucky two days ago. Those who were in the ark, I mean, outside the ark, all oh, chaos was going on. But those who were in the ark were fine. If you are in Christ, you are in the ark. The whole world can be going to hell on the outside, but you, if you are in Christ, you're going to be okay. Do you believe it? He is our ark. We are secure in Christ. I'm going to just read these, these scriptures that I have outlined here. And they're going to encourage us this morning. Amen. You ready for some encourage, encouragement? Amen. Let's start with John chapter 11. Verse 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Come on, somebody. I am, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He that believeth in me Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Can I hear an amen? amen. Here Jesus is telling his people, he is the resurrection. He is the life. Amen. If you are in Christ, you have life. You have life. And you have it more abundantly. John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. As you look around, you see the thief. Are you hearing me? As you look around and you see things going on in our, in our country today, in our world today, you see the thief. John chapter 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. When I saw the news of those looters and rioters, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But what did Jesus say? Read the rest of it. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly talking about his people. If we are in Christ, we have life. Not only do we have life, we have abundant life. Abundant life. We're not merely existing. We're not just merely living. We are living that abundant life if we are in Christ. Do you believe it? Sometimes I'll ask you if you believe it because at the confession of your mouth, you know, as your faith, so be it unto you, the Bible says. So I'm looking for a confirmation that you believe these things because it's God's word. Amen? 
Are you with me so far? Amen. I should mark these off. I normally have more organized notes, but I, my computer was not working. Oops, I marked off one I haven't read yet. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's not good. We have security in our God. Look on down further in John chapter 10. Verse 27, my sheep. By the way, in the Bible, when Jesus says my sheep, or when it says in the Bible, when God's talking about his sheep, it's talking about his Israel people. We are that people. Amen. So it's talking about us. My sheep. Hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Amen. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Amen. Amen. No one will be able to, no one ever could pluck us out of God's hand. He's got a grip, boy. He's got a grip that will not let go. And I thank God for that because, you know, there's times when we're weak and we might let go. But as a father leads his child against a, you know, across a, a, a busy street, the father's watching and he knows when to go across. The child might just run out there. But as a father and a child, it isn't the grip of the child that counts. It's the grip of the father. He's got us. Hold to God's unchanging hand. But I, I got to tell you, if you cannot hold, as long as you have faith, he'll hold you. Come on, that's good. He will hold you. No one can pluck you out of his hand. When the world's going to pot out there and you feel like giving up, Don't give up. Don't let go. The old expression, hang in there. Hang in there. But however strong you are, he's stronger. And he will not let you go. No one can pluck you out of his hand. You are secure if you are in Christ. Do you believe it? He is our provider. He gives us life. And in him we are secure. And he will take care of everything we need. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. If we will just seek him first. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Don't worry about provisions. I have lived a life <laughs> of faith. I've lived a life of faith, and I don't say that to to boost myself up. I'm really not. It's just, I'm just trying to say to you, I live by faith. My family and I have lived by faith all these years. And God has always taken care of us. I've known what it is to have abundance and I've known what it is to not even know where I'm going to get the money to pay my, the bill that's coming up due, you know. And I think you probably know that feeling as well. But he's always provided everything I've needed. Amen. As the song says, all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And it is. His faithfulness is great. 
In Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, ask, and it shall be given you, seek, and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you who, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, yes, that's what he said, if ye then, being evil, and, you know, if you think about it, you know it's true. You know you better than anybody. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Now, here we are promised by our Lord Jesus Christ we will have the things that we need. We may not always have the things we want, but we will always have the things we need if we would but ask. Now I caution you, don't ask for frivolous things. Don't ask for things you don't need. You may not get those things. And that's the grace of God, my friends. My goodness, where would we be if we got everything we wanted? Where would we be? How would we be? What would our character be like if we always got everything we asked for, even though it be extremely selfish? Where would we be? I thank God for his grace. I thank God for his discretion. He knows what we have need of before we need it. And he will make sure we have it. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verses, starting at verse 28, Come unto me. Oh, I love that. He says, come unto me. We have an invitation here. Jesus, God in flesh, the very God, says, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek. I am meek and lowly in heart. That means humble. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. We go to Jesus. He's inviting us. Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I love you, Cora. I love that baby. Come unto me. He says to, he says to one, he says to all, come unto me. Out there, when people are treating you like your public enemy number one just because you don't have a mask on your face, come unto me, he says. Amen. Come unto me. And you will find rest unto your souls. Amen. Amen. You'll find rest unto your souls. He is there. He is there. Let's turn to Daniel chapter 3. Are you still with me? Yes. Getting anything out of this this morning? Yes. I think I am too. Daniel chapter 3. I'm going to just kind of tell you the story instead of reading it all. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were three... Hebrew men 
who would not bow the knee, you could say, to the government. The ruler had said, you're going to bow your knee at a certain time of day. Every day you're going to bow the knee and you're going to worship the idol that I have set up. You're going to worship it. Anybody who doesn't, is this beginning to sound familiar? <laughs> Anybody who doesn't, we're going to, it's not quite that bad yet. We're going to throw them into the fiery furnace. You've got to bow the knee. I'm king. I'm big government, whatever. I'm the king, and you're going to do what I say. Or you don't have to, but you're going to go in the fiery furnace and die. Your choice. <laughs> they wouldn't bow. They wouldn't bow. They wouldn't bow. Well, it got word, got to the king, and the king brought him before him. I'll start at verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. He's told them, you're going to go in the fiery furnace if you don't bow. And they said, we're not going to bow. Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve any god, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was being tolerant there for a little while. He just said, Okay, you, I'm going to give you another choice, another chance. Obey. Obey the edict, obey the mandate, whatever. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. They commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. And you remember, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said... You can throw us in the fire furnace, but our God will deliver us. But then what did he say? Even if, the, even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow. Do we have the strength to do that? I'm just asking, do we have the strength to do that? Do we have the strength to say to a king or a government official, a governor, you can throw me in jail if you want to, but I'm not going to bow to your stupid edict. Do we have that strength? I wonder. I look around me and I'm really disturbed <laughs> at how few, I believe, would have the strength to do that. But they said, hey, we're not going to bow. God will deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow. We have a God, and that's not our God. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other... Yeah, they were men. I like that. I just, that just hit me. Then these men, these men were bound. A lot of wimps out there, my friends. These men were bound in their coats and their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace furnace. And one might think, well, that's the end of those rebels. Verse 24, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. 
and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Didn't we? We put three in there, right? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt in the form of the fourth is like unto the Son of God. Amen. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth, come forth, and come hither. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth and out of the midst of the fire. And the princes and governors and captains and the captain's counselor, king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their body that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God. There is no other God. Can I hear an amen? There is no other God that can deliver after this sort. And the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Now let me tell you, I don't know how bad it's going to get here, and I don't know what we're all going to have to face, but I think that this is a timely story to read from God's word. There will be those who will bow. Now listen, if you bow for this, maybe it's not so big a thing. If you bow for that, it's going to be so much easier to bow for the next thing and the next thing. When are we going to say no? No. When are we going to say no? We will serve our God you are not our God. We will serve our God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43 is very similar. Isaiah chapter 43. Are you still with me? Amen. I'm checking from time to time. Just want to make sure. Isaiah chapter 43, beginning at verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord... Jehovah God that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. I want us all to hear this. Let's, it's, he's talking to us. He's talking to us. This is what I'm saying. The Lord, Jehovah God that created thee, O Jacob, and who formed thee, O Israel. This is us. He's talking to us. He says, fear not. I want us to just pause there and let that sink in. Fear not. Fear not. Don't be afraid. If there's one thing that is being pushed on us day after day, relentlessly, it's fear, fear, fear. Our God is saying, fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. When you're afraid, you do things you shouldn't do. Fear is the opposite of faith. It's negative faith. Right there in the back, fear is the dark room where negatives are developed. Don't do it. 
Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When the God of heaven and earth, the almighty God, the creator God, the God of all, says you're mine. What does that make you feel like? <laughs> the one who made everything. The one in whom all things consist. And the one who, if he wants to, can end it all just like that. He can make all the stars go out like that in a moment if he wants to. We don't, there's nothing in his word to indicate that that will happen except he will make a new heaven and a new earth. Think of that. How vast is heaven? How vast? He's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. We, we read this in his word, and I believe his word. The very creator God the one who controls everything, he says, listen, thou art mine. Do you get a sense of possessiveness here? You're mine. It's like a, I, I get the picture almost of a guy and his, his wife is beside him and she is somehow threatened and the guy steps up and says, she's mine, don't you touch her. Amen. Don't you even think about it. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Sometimes, lately, have you, a little, have you felt a little bit overwhelmed? God is saying here, our Lord Jesus Christ, this is the Old Testament, but you know, he is God. You're mine, he's saying to us. You're mine. When, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire. Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You're okay. I'm yours and you're mine. I'm going to take care of you. Now we're going to end with Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. The very last words of the very last verse in Matthew. Just the last words only. Lo, Meaning, look at this, see this, I want you to get this. Lo, I am with you always. I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world. Whatever trials we face, whatever they may be, it doesn't matter. Whatever the trial, whatever the turbulence, the tempest that we face, the trouble... The chaos, the anarchy that's out there, whatever it is, lo, he's saying to us, lo, I am with you. Amen. Even unto the end of the world. Amen. Today I want you to leave with encouragement in your heart. I want you to leave with courage. I want you to leave with joy in your heart. You're his and he's Yours, very creator God, though all forsake us, perhaps, he never will. And whatever is going on in our lives, know that he is working all things together, all those things together for good to those who love him and who are the called according to his purpose. Thank you for listening to me. I pray that this was a blessing to you and that you are encouraged in the Lord this morning. This altar is open for prayer for those who would like to come forward as we sing our closing hymn.